This is Eric Burcham once again with Apex CCTV. Uh, today we're going to be going over port forwarding in regarding to surveillance equipment and some of the common problems that come up uh, when trying to manage port forwarding. Some of the things that I hear on a pretty daily basis in dealing with this sort of thing. Uh, first of all, just a quick explanation of what port forwarding is. Anytime you have a, a camera or a DVR that, that needs to be viewable from the internet, uh, the correct ports have to be ported forwarded from your public IP address. So, uh, first thing we need to do is find what our public IP address is. Uh, I can do this by going to whatismyip.com. And there are some other similar websites, but if you see, it'll tell me that my public IP address is 96.226.1.10 as opposed to my internal IP address, which if I do an IP config, I'll come up showing as. 20.10.10.102. So this is internal. This is my IP address uh, on my specific network where I'm located. And this IP address here is my, my network's public IP address on the internet. So once I have this information, if I've done my port configuration correctly, somebody from anywhere in the world should be able to browse to this IP address here and, uh, and reach my cameras or my DVR or whatever I have set up. Okay. Uh, pitfall number two is using an internal IP address that is not static. So this, for example, is is a DHCP IP address. Uh, if I do an, an IP config slash all, which you should uh, get comfortable with using for, for this information gathering type of thing, uh, we come back up here to the top, it's going to show me here that my DHCP server is at 20.10.10.1 and what we want to see is that this line is either blank or not there at all. That would indicate that I'm using a static IP address and of course before I can set a static IP address I need to find out uh, what the DHCP range is in my router. So the first thing I'm going to do for that is just go ahead and log into my router and once I'm logged into my router I can go over to my network settings and see that uh, yes, I am using a DHCP server, it's enabled, and the range of addresses it's going to be handing out are uh, 20.10.10, which I can get from here, and then uh, anywhere from 100 to 254. So if any number below 100 I use is fine. Uh, before I can set that IP address, I need to find out uh, what the IP address is on my camera currently. So let me run an installation wizard. I'm using just a, a Vivitech PV, uh, PZ6114. It's a nice little wireless camera. Um, it can connect to a wireless router and it's viewable from just about anywhere. It uses several different protocols uh, and is pretty simple to set up. So I can see currently that the IP address of that camera is 20.10.10.100. So that means since my DHCP range starts at 100, that this address is a DHCP address. So if I browse to that address, I will see my camera. I'll go ahead and show you that. Um, again, 20.10.10.100. And of course, here's my uh, PZ6114. I'm logged in. I can move the video around. Uh, any of the things I can normally do. But I'm logged into this from my local network. Uh, and I need to log in from the internet. So first thing I'm going to do on the camera itself is give it a new IP address and change the network settings to be uh, something permanent. So I'm going to use a fixed IP address so it doesn't go changing on me once I do my port forwarding. And I'm going to put it on 20.10.10.75 because I've already checked uh, to make sure there's nothing there. Uh, typically you can ping an IP address if you want to be sure there's nothing on it. Uh, it's not 100% fail safe. Obviously if you are the network administrator or can get in touch with them you should check. But if I ping this uh, you'll see I get no reply. Uh, or I get a host unreachable, whereas if I were to ping something uh, valid like the router, I'm going to get replies that look like this, uh, that look like this right here. So if you see this, you need to move on to a different IP address, use something else. Uh, in this case, the .75 was just fine. Uh, everything else here is actually still the same. The subnet mask is correct. The router is correct. Uh, the primary DNS server is correct. Um, and I'm also going to make a quick note of uh, these ports. Um, this is the HTTP port. This is the port that the camera's web server that I was looking at, actually that I'm looking at right now, is coming off of. 
So I'm going to start jotting these down. We've got port 80 so far, port 5002, port 5003, uh, and that's, uh, that's good enough to get me started. So let me go ahead and save these. And this will take just a minute for the camera to restart. Okay, my camera has restarted. I'm logged back in. And uh, as you can see, we are now on this new IP address I just gave it, 20.10.10.75. Um, so once again, uh, I'm still still logged into the camera, still able to move the, move the screen around, uh, able to zoom in on things if I want to. Uh, but I'm still on my local internet. I'm not... I'm not, or on my local intranet rather, I'm not viewing this from the web yet. Uh, so the next thing I need to do is, is put some settings in my router to, to make sure that I can reach this camera from outside my local network. So in order to do that, uh, I'm already logged into my, my uh, router from earlier, so I just need to go to this advanced tab here and do, uh, whoop, let's get logged back in. And do some port forwarding. Uh, my my particular router actually has um, a, a page here called port forwarding, which makes it a little bit easier to find since that's kind of the common term. So the only thing that's even left for us to do at this point is to start adding in these ports that we jotted down from the IP camera port 80, port 5002, port 5003. Uh, and I'm going to grab the names out of the camera real quick. So if we're back on the networking page. On the camera, I have HTTP, uh, audio, and video. So I'm going to put in those names real quickly. And the ports themselves are 80, 5002, and 5003. Uh, of course, we're not going to use a range. My router can do a range, so I could do, say, 80 to 85, and they would all be opened. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to do port 80. Uh, that's the starting and ending point. Same thing with 5002 and 5003. And the traffic type is going to be any. Uh, actually, for port 80, it's going to be TCP, according to our camera. Port 80, it's going to be uh, TCP, usually is used for the web. And then these two, are they say they're UDP. So we'll select that. I will allow them all the time, so anybody should be able to reach my camera from, uh, you know, from midnight to midnight on any given day. So we'll go ahead and save these settings. Oops, sorry, that button's up here at the top. Oh, oh yes, I forgot. I have to forward these to the correct IP address. So in this case, 20.10.10.75 is the IP address we gave to our camera. So that's going to be the one we use on all three of these. And now we can save this. back in here to the advanced tab and then port forwarding and make sure those took. So I want to go ahead and go back to what is my IP.com uh, which once again lets me find out what my public IP address is. Now my router uh, here where I'm working does not allow me to browse outside of the internet and back in so for example I can't hit my public IP address uh, from uh, an internal IP address but what I can do is to show you guys a camera at the office that's already configured to work correctly so if I go in here to my live demos uh, again I'm working from a public location if I right click on this and copy the address and then paste it here you'll see that I'm just browsing to an IP address it's uh, 74.7.157.172 which uh, coincidentally is our demo camera at the office for a PZ6114 and uh, even though I'm not at the office, I'm, I'm somewhere else. If I hit the uh, uh, hit the go button over here, I will pull up that camera and I can log in and uh, play around with it, do anything I like to do. Wow, somebody's got it zoomed right in on a desk. But if we uh, zoom this out, so there's our uh, there's our office. I can move the camera around, uh, zoom in and out on things, and uh, do anything I would be able to do if I were playing with this camera on my local area network.